In the morning, we had a long drive to Greenfields Hotel in Aleppi, which is a very different landscape, lots of rice paddies and palm trees. We then went down to the water and got up on a boat and then travelled through absolutely idyllic backwaters lined with some quite impressive houses. It was such a change from the busyness of the Indian cities we've been to. First stop was at a very modest village house where they showed us how they soak coconuts for four months to remove the fibrous material and then as you can see just by using a spinning hook can turn it into rope. What? I think she's just teasing it to make it longer. The rope is actually quite strong and it's interesting that they use every part of the coconut, the husks, the insides, the liquid and the leaves. So, so this is the little device which is then used right. to bind two strands together. Okay. Then after saying goodbye to them back on the boat for a trip to another modest house where they showed how they ground rice by hand and they shook it in order to separate out the husks from the rice grains themselves. We just burn the entire skin and we keep it like this. And it's like it separates out. See, this is the technique. Oh, it's quite small, isn't it? Yeah. After we burn the entire papaya, then they took us on a tour of their back garden showing how they grow just about everything. This is chili and this is curry leaf. No? Then they showed us how you climb a coconut tree to get the coconuts. Wow, who's going to volunteer to go up there? Is he going to climb up there? Yeah, you are. Plus, Behind their strip of land, they also own part of an enormous communally organised and cultivated rice field. But in the garden themselves, they had every sort of vegetable. Food. After that, it was back on the boat for another trip down the river. Next stop was some coconut drink also chiseling out the interior which is surprisingly tasty and this is how they plait the coconut leaves in order to make roofing Three, one up, 
and choose the second one and make it the earth plant. They also used another plant to make matting and it would take a couple of days to make a mat like this and they'd only get about a fibre for it. Then a fisherman demonstrated how easy it was to just chuck a net in a river and pull it out and there we have some little fish. Next stop was to find out how you can um, get coconut sap and drink it neat as a toddy as it contains about three or four percent alcohol and it's very strictly controlled so they can't sell it and they can't distill it it's all got to go through official channels as well as the modest houses there were larger ones many of them with very prominent color tvs that you could see All sorts of colours and designs and this last one is quite amazing. Then back on the bus to drive further towards Alapi. Next stop was the Choir Museum. And all this rope made from coconuts. Lots of interesting objects made from coconut fibre. Interestingly, it was two British men who realised the possibilities for commercial exploitation of this substance. And there was an interesting tableau showing how it was created traditionally and then how they develop machines more and more sophisticated each time to make it easier to get the fibre material off the coconuts and uh, normally they have to soak them for two months and then four months in the water to get the stuff out and then all sorts of machines were spinning it and then the next stage of the evolution of the mechanisation was to devise machines that would um, also extract the fibres. This was a lovely group of women who were learning how to make handicrafts from all over India. Examples like this. They all wanted to take pictures of us and have selfies with us. This is an entire house where everything is made of Cryo matting. And here we have the looms which are used to weave the mats in much the same way as you might weave material. Then this is Alapi Central, the main area. Alapi, the first part of the word, it comes from the iron that was made there. There's a lovely beach that goes on for miles, but we didn't have time to stop at it. Then finally, we arrived where the houseboats were, and there are hundreds and hundreds of them. Our boat was quite luxurious, really. We had three double bedrooms between three people, me, one of the guests, and the guide. Quite big, spacious rooms, much better than I expected, with proper toilets and showers, although I only got cold water in the morning. And honestly, it was probably one of the best bits of the trip to just sit on the front, quietly, calmly, going through these different waterways. And uh, then we were fed in the evening masses of food couldn't fault it in any way. It was just so absolutely lovely and relaxing. Mm -hmm. 
after all the intense busyness of the last couple of weeks, to go through these channels was just fantastic. And this is a floating market. We saw lots of people washing clothes in the water and also swimming in it. Finally, we tied up for the night. The others went for a walk, but I just wanted to sit on the front of the boat and watch the light gradually go dark and slightly pink. It was just the most relaxing thing I had done all holiday.